Anyways, though, here we have the first of, I think, three polar bear levels. And I like these more than the ones in Crash 1. Like, the controls are a lot more fluid, but... And you and you can dash, which you couldn't do in, you couldn't do in Crash One. But the thing with this is that with these, okay, I got I managed to do to do, do that on my first try. But um, yeah, you have some parts where there's ice, and you have to kind of angle yourself in, in a certain way so you can get all the boxes. And I'm not really a, fa a fan of it, to be honest. Like. I'm one of the few people in the world that actually don't mind ice physics that much, but it's to a certain to a certain degree. Like um, when you have to uh, work with ice physics in a way like this, it's when I don't really like it. You know, it's like I don't know. I I, I guess you you one you'd understand what I mean, but yeah. Okay, we're doing really well so far. Oh, wow. Did we actually do this in one go? Okay, let's see. Yo! That was sick. Let's go! The polar bear's adorable, by the way. <laughs> yeah. You you aren't gonna get many uh what what should we call it? Um conversations with Cortex anymore. I do like that though, like I do like that they added that those conversations because like in Crash One there wasn't really much of a story um outside of like oh well it, it's basically like your standard Mario kind of storyline. Get your, get your girlfriend back or get the princess back. Um, but with Crash Two, like, it's not much bigger of a story. Like, it's just oh, Cortex secretly wants to take over the world, but he's putting on putting on an act and making it seem like you're helping him save the world. And it's like, I mean, I guess there's more there's more um, to it than. Saving just saving your girlfriend and that's the end of the day the end of the end of the game but the the main difference is is that um, Crash Crash one issued if you didn't wait for the for the cutscene for the opening cutscene in the title at the title screen You probably wouldn't even know what's going on like you you probably what if you haven't played Crash One and you watch my play for you probably wouldn't know that you have to wait at, at the title screen. But yeah, you have to wait there and then event at like after like 10, 20, not not 20, but like 10 seconds or so, it will cut to that little uh, opening cutscene there. And I edited that in the Seas Brain play for and uh, at my solo run to where it played right after the. Um, Right after all the logos showed up, which I think flows a lot better. Um, but yeah, it, when you actually play the game, you're gonna have to wait for it to show up. And I've seen a playthrough, well, well, at least one playthrough where he didn't see the opening cutscene, and when he got a game over, it was like, ah, oh, we don't even know who that twat is yet who's chasing us. Oh man, it's like, yeah, I can't. I do kind of, I do like that they have made it so the cutscene plays when you start the game in two and three, so you actually understand what's going on. Not that it's really important by any means, but still. And I do like that. Um, well, the the original point I was going to make in the first place was, was that in the in this game they include the whole conversations after cer after after a set amount of levels and. I mean, it doesn't really add too much to the story or anything, but it kind of just keeps you more engaged, I guess, is um, a way to put it. And Crash 1, again, like, if you didn't watch the opening, you probably won't know what's going on in it. There's no real... There, 
there's not a lot going on with the story there, really. Like, um, again, just go save your girlfriend. That's it. End of the game. But yeah, not that it's really too bad. It, not like it's it's because of that the game's bad or anything, but I don't know. The conversations in two and three just give it a little bit more meat, I guess. Alright. Ill deal. Okay. Now we have another level theme. This is I like the I like the ill the uh, ill levels, not well the sewer levels I should say. Um like visually um well, visually it's different to look at. But, um... Oh, dang it. And they kind of have a... Interesting... Feel to them in the, in, in, in the gameplay sense, because... I wouldn't say it's very, like... It's, I wouldn't say it's, like, puzzle-focused or anything, or... That puzzle-focused, but... You have to... Use enemies... Uh, to... Like, knock out, like, fans and like propellers and stuff like that and um I, I don't know you, you kind of have to think a bit more about what you're doing in these stages so yeah and again it's a it, i i do like the aesthetic aesthetics with these levels as well like again it, it's different from just no uh, more snow so yeah i appreciate that but yeah Green gem, and just kill me. And how ironic that it's in a, it's in a sewer level. All right, that might have been bad. That was that was almost bad. All right. Yeah, the... Okay. <laughs> but yeah, um... These levels basically do what I think uh, backtracking in Crash 2 sh should do. That... In that... Oh, gosh. Alright, I want to see if they anything is actually up there. No, okay. But, um... What was it? In the, in the sewer levels, um, that basically what they do is that they, um, have two specific pathways sometimes, and one pathway is the right way to go, and the other pathway is just a little bonus area with, like, a couple boxes and stuff. Um, and I feel that's how they should... They should have handled like the backtracking um, in this game for the for the most part. Like, like it, the the Wampa fruit kind of encourages you to go this way, and that's how you get the crystal. But I, on my first playthrough and a couple of times after, actually, I've actually missed the the crystal in this in this level because I thought I could just uh, go to the I thought I could just go to the right because I. Because the whole, like, the Wampa Fruit being going in that direction made me feel like that was the right way to go. And I would miss something if I didn't, if I went to the left first. But, you know. I mean, it, the game guiding you, I guess, can also end up tricking you. Well, not just with this game, but just a game in general. But, hey, it happens. Oh, come on. Yeah, I like how I really love how fast uh, climbing is in this game. Or 
clinging, clinging to the walls or whatever you'd call it. I don't know. Alright. Okay. Whatever. I'm, al I'm alive. And we should have everything. Yep. Yuppers. Okay, let's check. Okay, we're just missing one gem here. Alrighty. Now you can actually, if you go um, through the warp rooms, you can actually uh, hold triangle as you go up a warp room, up a, up a warp room, and refight a boss. Which um, isn't it? It's a cool little secret. I mean, it's a lot easier. To know like you can you can just go to the boss and fight him in uh, one and three like you can just go to the their specific um, level location but with Crash Two you kind of have to figure it out yourself which is a little bit weird but hey at least you can at least you can refight them at the same time though a lot of them aren't that fun to begin with but yeah it's not. Really, not a lot I can say about these two. These two. Um, the only, well, the only thing I can say is that again, like like I said in the Sea Spring playthrough, in the beta version for this, the the big guy in the middle, um, throw threw his swords during every um, every hit, like like this, like when he's when the other guy is spinning. And he's throwing his swords like this now. Yeah, in the beta version, he always did that. Okay. I'll just add another six to the life count. That's all Crash can say. Well, uh-oh. 